Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and thanks for inviting me, Tony. Um, I'm Karen Bowie. I'm a fourth year medical student at Tulane School of Medicine right now. Um, so I guess Tony kind of wants me to talk about my whole path here. So um, I guess starting from high school, um, so I'm a first gen Vietnamese American, um, you know, going into higher education and um, the graduate school process and all. So I think my experience might be similar to a lot of yours. Um, so I went to high school in the Long Beach Unified School District. Um, I'm from Long Beach, and that's where my family is from. So just, you know, did my thing there. Um, was pretty involved while I was there with volunteering, sports. I was like a track and cross country runner. Um, you know, tried to do as many extracurriculars as I could to kind of figure out, you know, who I am and what I'm interested in. Um, fast forward four years later, applied to a bunch of UCs. I know some of you must probably be in that process right now. So. Um, I can kind of relate. Um, I know what you've been through. Um, so I ended up going to UCLA where I met the wonderful Tony. Um, and that's kind of where I learned to like fine tune my time management skills because as Tony can attest to, I was a part of a lot of extracurriculars there. Um, so things like VSU, which is the Vietnamese Student Union, um, working with high schoolers as well, um, and other college kids. Um, I did um, I was like a camp counselor at UCLA Unicamp. I was a piano teacher. I did Hope, which is where I met Tony, and just lots of things like that, including hospital volunteering, so that I could eventually get to medical school, where I currently am right now. Yeah, and then I plan on going to, into family medicine, if you guys know what that is. So everyone has their own different way, so you don't have to, you know, do what I did, but I guess I can share a little bit about how I was able to manage everything. Um, I think the most important part for me was just making a calendar. I use Google calendars and I um, use Google calendars. I use checklists, um, all that stuff to schedule things to make sure I'm not double booking myself. Um, you know, like in um, college and high school, I was like that one girl who would say yes to everything, you know, like helping everyone out, um, like doing all these things for my organizations. Um, so like the number one thing in time management, I guess, is knowing what you can and can't do, like just realizing that it's, you know, okay to say no, you don't have to add everything to your schedule, you can make some time for yourself too. Um, yeah, so it's, I mean, for me, it's just a matter of um, signing up for things that I enjoyed and so it didn't really feel like a chore, it didn't feel like a job or like something that I had to do, it's something that I wanted to do. And so making checklists um, and making time for myself and things that I like to do outside of, you know, um, school and your extracurriculars. So that kind of keeps you sane and on track. So in high school, I guess grades wise, I got pretty good grades, um, but it was a lot easier to get good grades in high school than college. So that's like a whole nother thing. Um, but you know, high school, I kind of took all the APs and honors classes that I could um, and then tried to be as involved as I could at the same time. So I was, so my main thing was like athletics. I was a track and cross country runner and that was kind of the main theme of my personal statement. And um, you know, like Tony was saying, like, you know, all these videos you're seeing, like you need like X GPA and like, 10 extracurricular activities and like, you know, all those numbers, um, they're gonna differ for everyone and you don't really have to match that. Like you don't have to find 10 different things that you like to do. Find like two things that you really like and do them well, like be committed to them, you know? Cause I think that when college, like college essay readers and admissions people, when they see your dedication and your passion for something, that's a lot more important than meeting the numbers. Um, and of course, grades are important, but I do see that there's like this trend of like holistic review. It was like kind of starting when I was going to college, but I know that it's a whole lot better now. Um, so yes, like work hard, study hard, but also like make time to do things that you like. You know, I did, um, like, like I said, I did cross country and track. I did like, um, like senior senate, junior senate, like those student government type things. I wasn't like the president or you know, anything important, but I was like part of the committees that plan things. Um, I was, you know, a link crew leader, which is someone who just helps, um, you know, the freshman students kind of adjust to high school life. I did key club. I'm sure a lot of you know what that is. That's like the service club. And again, I wasn't on the board or anything for that, but I was pretty involved in their events and 
um, there were other things I'd like to do, but you know, Key Club was just a good way for me to do, you know, random little things in my community to feel like, um, you know, I was actually doing something with my weekends when I wasn't, you know, at a cross country race or something like that. Um, yeah, high school was a little too long ago, so I don't remember exactly everything I did. But, you know, like, like I said, my main focus was track cross country. And like, you know, the, I think the traits, the lessons, the qualities that I gained from that were more important than me trying to do like 20 different things. Um, yeah, I think that's like the general takeaway. I did. Yeah, I've, I actually found um, like a project I did in eighth grade with my goals. And I guess in middle school, I wanted to be a pediatrician too. So. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to admit um, my, well, at least my first year, the first two quarters were really tough for me. Like I was an excellent student in high school. You know, I was like at the top of my class and everything just always came so easily. Um, so I thought I had all my study skills, all my time management skills down. But when I went to UCLA, the transition was really tough for me. Um, like I, like I didn't think I could be a doctor anymore. Like my grades weren't that good. Like I, like I got like my first like C in math ever, my first quarter. And so I was like, oh, I can't do it. You know, I'm reading all these blogs and like listening to all these all the different counselors that I'm meeting and they're like, yeah, you got to see, you can't go to bed school or like, you know, like your GPA is not going to recover, but like, you know, here I am. <laughs> the first year. Yeah. It was really difficult for me. Those first two quarters. I think it was just getting over, like getting out of my own head and kind of just trying to focus on things outside of school. And so like, you know, those first two semesters, I wasn't really involved because I was struggling with adjusting to the college workload. But, you know, that third quarter, I was like, you know what, like maybe this like academic thing's not working out for me. So I'm going to toss some extra curriculars in there and see how that goes. Um, and so it turned out like the busier I was, the better my time management skills were. And so like the more effective I got at studying and I just kept trying different ways to excel in my classes. I started, you know, this was like this is like a big theme that we talked about in Hope when I was working with Tony a lot, like knowing when to ask for help. Um, and so I, you know, I reached out to like tutors, I got tutoring, I went to office hours, did all that stuff. And so, you know, slowly but surely my grades started to go up. And then I was able to toss in more extracurriculars, doing more things I liked. And that really pushed me to be able to, you know, excel academically and outside of school. Um, so you need your bachelor's. There's like a certain amount of um, prerequisites that you have to meet. Um, it's usually just, you know, the general chem, physics, um, what am I missing, math <laughs> classes, um, you know, all those um, general sciences that you need to take in order to sit for the MCAT, which is, which I see in the chat box from the side of my eye that some people have asked about. Um, and the MCAT is like the standardized test that you need all that background knowledge for in order to apply those skills and like that knowledge to answering crazy questions that they have for you. Um, so you take the MCAT, you get your score, and then you just apply to schools. People apply to like tons of schools. Um, it's a very expensive process. And so I was lucky enough to have some family members who were willing to chip in and help me out. Um, but they also do have fee waivers and things like that if your family meets um, certain requirements, which I don't want, I'm not exactly sure of. Um, but y'all can look that up on the side or I can let you know later. Um, and then after that, you interview and you go wherever you get in. That's how med school is. <laughs> so I actually took two gap years. So because I was, you know, so busy in college and I was trying to do all these things and like gain experience and build up my volunteer stuff, because um, that's, you know, a big part of the med school application, your volunteer services. Um, so I didn't have time to study for the MCAT. I didn't have time to, you know, start looking into schools. And I also didn't have the money at the time to apply. So I decided to take two gap years doing something that I like. Um, I ended up being a behavioral therapist, which is, um, I did something similar in college. And that's where I learned the skills to be able to become one um, after I graduated. And um, from that, I saved up money, started paying off my student loans, set aside money for my uh, med school apps. And then that's when I started studying for the MCAT. 
um, because it was a little bit too much for me during college. But there are plenty of people who do it during college and don't have to take those gap years. Um, But California, are most people here from California or is this like a national? It's a national. Oh, it's actually international. We actually have. Oh, it's international. Okay. International. (laughs) Okay. Well, um, being from Southern California, um, UCLA probably generates like the most pre-meds and there's not that many med school seats in California itself. And so it's pretty competitive being from California because some states have their own preferences for their own students. And so I just felt like I needed some time to become more quote unquote competitive to apply to med school. Um, and it was just nice having some real world experience. Um, it was a large topic of my interviews and um, the average starting age for my med school class was 25. So that's like three years out of college. Um, Yeah, in my class, I think it's pretty common because my class actually has a lot of California people and practically everyone I know from California took two, three, or even more gap years. Um, We also have some people that are um, career changers. So like, you know, people who are like lawyers, engineers, things like that beforehand. And I think that's like something that med schools look for when they're building their class. Um, They're just looking for, you know, a diverse range of people who have a lot of different experiences because you bring all these experiences into your work with your patients. I feel like I'm preparing for residency interviews right now. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so right now I'm a fourth year med student. So I finished taking both of the board exams that you need to take while in med school already, step one and step two CK. Um, Because of COVID, they canceled the clinical um, board exams for this year, which was really lucky for me, but I'll probably have to take it later on. Um, So I'm all done with the hard part. Like this is a part where it's supposed to be fun and you're supposed to, you know, have time to enjoy the city that your med school is in. But unfortunately, because of COVID, I can't. Um, So I'm just looking up programs right now. I'm applying for a family medicine residency. Um, My fiance is actually going into medicine too, and he's doing psychiatry. And so we're doing this thing called the couples match, um, which just means that I have to apply to a lot more programs, but hopefully we'll end up somewhere together. Um, And so in 10 to 15 years, I hope to just, you know, be established um, working in a community clinic um, with, um, I'm from Long Beach, so I'm really hoping to go back and work with a patient population similar to the, um, you know, um, to what I grew up in, you know, just an underserved area. I think that's where they need the most help. And that's kind of the main reason I wanted to do family medicine. So I hope to just be established in practice and hopefully, you know, teaching or just taking on students of my own as well. I'm going to try my best to explain it. Um, So couple snatch is pretty much we're up. So we're applying to schools in the same area. And then at the end of the interview cycle, we're going to rank our schools in like different, there's different permutations, right? So if I interviewed at UCI, he could also interview at UCI or he could interview at UCLA, which is somewhere similar. So on my list, I'll have, I end up at UCI, he ends up at UCI. I end up at UCI, he ends up at UCLA. And so it's like a bunch of different combinations of possibilities. And like, there's this algorithm that you pay for and it's supposed to match you at somewhere you'll both be happy so we'll see how that works out but it tends to work out for most people and they tend to match at their top three if they're not couple snatching <laughs>